Happen again. Mortgage rates for 30-year fixed loans falling to a record low last week. So are they going to drop even further, or is now the time to refinance, even if you've already done so? In today's Take Charge Consumer Protection segment, I wanted to take a look at what you can do to save the most on your mortgage. And joining us now is real estate attorney Sherry Olafson. And Sherry, great to have you back. And of course, we have to have you back because these rates do keep dropping lower. Thanks for joining us. Sure, they're keeping us busy, right? They are, and I want, I really, even if you save a couple of hundred dollars a month, it might be worth it if you can avoid some of the costs of refinancing. Tell us what is the equation to know whether or not it's time to do it or do it again? Well, of course, Jamie, the big reason that people refinance is to get a lower interest rate or to shorten the term. But at the end of the day, the goal is to pay less money in interest one way or the other. So the general rule of thumb is that if you can lower your interest rate by about 2%, then it's worth refinancing if you're going to stay in the home for about three years. Because again, you'll lower the payment, but you need enough time to make up for the closing costs. 2%? I mean, that's a, so 1% doesn't make sense to contact the bank and say, I want to pay less? It really depends on your exact situation. If you're going to stay in the home for a long time and you, and you have a larger than average size mortgage, then of course the numbers pay off at that point. But you know, the interesting thing now in this new economy is that rather than focusing on that monthly payment and just getting the lowest possible monthly payment, which is of course what got a lot of folks into trouble, more and more people are really focusing on the overall amount that they're going to pay for that loan during the whole term of, of their home ownership. So in other words, how much it's going to end up costing them because oftentimes, and you know with your own background in, in mortgages, that oftentimes people end up paying more for the loan than they even paid for the home. And that's the good faith estimate that a lot of people ignore. It comes in, it says you're going to borrow this amount of money, let's say $100,000, and it's going to cost you thirty or $40,000 to do that, so ultimately you're paying the total. But right, that you, total is reflected on the good faith estimate. Explain correct? to folks, because I think it's important, that when you refinance, oftentimes the amortization, not to use a big word, but the amount of your monthly payment that goes to interest and principal changes. So you could end up, if you're not going to stay in the home the full 30 years or 20 years or even 15, you could end up paying a lot more at the beginning. Tell us why. Right, right. And that's a factor because remember when you refinance, even if you're going from a 20 or 30 year loan to, to, into a 15 year loan, when you refinance, you're actually restarting that term. So if you had a 30 year loan, for example, and you only had 12 years left on it, even if you refinance into a 15 year loan, you're now going to actually be paying, including interest, for 15 years rather than 12 years. And with each monthly payment, you pay down a little bit of principal. So each time you do that, you're actually paying less and less interest. But at the the beginning you're paying the highest rates of interest so often it's it can be three or four or five years before you really start making any kind of dent into that principal payment now in terms of refinancing though folks who have a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac loan are still the best off especially with that new harp 2.0 product because it allows anyone even if you're underwater no matter how far underwater you are to refinance and of course being underwater and having bad credit are the two obstacles holding most folks back from taking advantage of these low rates so I want to advise people to take a look at their current mortgage statement and breakdown before they even consider refinancing. Because if you're paying like almost all principal and very little interest, you're going to reverse the situation if you refinance. Something to consider. What about folks right, who have been hard, hit hard, Shari? They've lost their job. They have questionable credit, but they deserve a break too. Are there programs out there that can help them? Well, HARP 2.0 actually is great if your loan is with Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. The only issue with HARP is if you're in default. And remember, a lot of people intentionally defaulted to try to get modifications. If you're in default, you have to be current on your mortgage for at least six months, and you could not have had more than one missed or late payment within 12 months. But that program extends until 2013. So if you want to try to get that program, you can get back caught up with your payments, and you can still qualify you have until 2013. The other thing, Jamie, is in some of the harder hit states, there's actually a fund. It was billion, millions of dollars and very little used. It's in 19 states now. It's called the Hardest Hit Fund, and you can call your state housing finance authority. There are mon there's monies available to help you pay your mortgage while you're un or underemployed, and there's also money available to help you get caught up on your mortgage once you become reemployed. The exact details and qualifications depend on the state, but it's definitely worth calling, and, sure. and no one's using that money.
You know, Sherry, why we started this Take Charge? I wanted to help people because everybody's suffering in one way or another to just make the most of what they do have. Thank you so much on this issue. You're fantastic. Sure. And I hope that people will make those calls and help themselves out. Thank you. Thanks for doing it. Great to see you. And if you want more of my Take Charge consumer protection segments, just go to foxnews.com. We are on this. We are covering a lot of areas. Next week, credit cards, how to get the best.